in this just-in-time learning environment where not what you know, but what you do with what you know, what you create with what you know, what you apply with what you know is incredibly important. And in my mind, that's why doing is more important than remembering. And in my mind, learning is all about doing, experiencing what you're doing, you know, cataloging that experience and improving uh, you know, that, that knowledge base you have by continuing to do, to continuing to innovate, to continuing to apply. There is so much in, in this world to, to understand. I get a Google Alerts skills gap message every morning at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how important that is to me in learning. Right. Just coming down the train here today to this interview, I learned several things that I had no idea I was going to learn at 6.20 when I got on that train in New Haven. Yeah. And it's exciting. Right. Life without learning, in my opinion, is not worth living. When I was researching the book, I came across a quote by Winston Churchill, who, who said this in 1936 when he went to the House of Commons as Germany was rearming, and he warned its members saying, hey look, Errors of procrastination are always followed by errors of consequence. So one of the things I've learned is that here in the U.S. anyway, you know, people will be watching this video around the world, but people here in the U.S. in terms of public education, science and math, skills and skills gaps, we have been tracking this issue since 1941. And we've done little about it. And in my opinion, in the next 10 years, and I'm going to weave in this other concept here for you in a moment. We're going to reach a crossroads, an era of consequence. And one of my favorite chapters in the book, Phil, is about it, an obscure Japanese physicist named Mitsutomo Yuasa, who in the same year that President Kennedy was, in 1962, asking Americans, let's go back to the moon and back in seven years. Yuasa was writing in a scientific journal in Japan an essay and he proved conclusively, and it's been peer-reviewed, so now it's known as Yuasa's phenomena, that every 100 to 110 years since 1540, the world's center of scientific activity has shifted from, from Italy to France to England to Germany, and then Yuasa put it on the shores of the United States in 1920. Now I'm a liberal arts major, but I can add 100 and 110 to 1920, and if Yuasa's phenomena is in play again, and there are some, including myself, who suggest that it is. It says between, 19, between 2020 and 2030, you know, it's going to move off the shores of the United States. Just briefly, when I say that, people often ask, all I ask the people in the audiences I speak to, well, who do you think it's going to, what country is it going to go to? And you get hands, mostly answers of China or India. And I pause and I listen to them and I say no not going to either of those countries. What it's going to is the world because the internet has connected us all and that's the biggest learning challenge that any country faces because it's not going to be employment based on the, uh, the Atlantic and Pacific. Employers are going to be able to hire talented people wherever they are around the world. And that uh, I wish it were another country because then the U.S. could formulate trade policies that would make the country more competitive, but it's, it's going to be all 180 plus countries and, and uh, that's a big issue. That's what I learned and it's happening in my opinion.